My name is Barry Rogers, and I'm sitting here tonight with executive producer J. Michael Brown, who has produced a documentary called A Hero's Welcome. Now, I want you to tell us a little bit about this, if you would. Sure, Barry. A Hero's Welcome is a film that centers around a small Texas town that comes together to honor our nation's Medal of Honor recipients. Now, Gainesville has this program. It's called the Medal of Honor Host City Program. Tell us a little bit about that, if you would. Well, the Medal of Honor Host City Program was uh, the brainchild of uh, a gentleman named Don Pettigrew. Mm -hmm. And essentially, it is a program that brings the living Medal of Honor recipients to Gainesville for one week every year. You and Don got to work quite a bit together in regard to this and so forth. Was he very instrumental as far as the documentary went and so? Well, we couldn't have done the documentary without Don's help. Right. Uh, you know, he is uh, essentially a walking encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to the Medal of Honor recipients. So you guys could have just done the documentary, but you actually chose to do a big premiere event uh, to go along with that. Whose idea was that? Well, you know, I thought it would be an opportunity to uh, spread the word about the event in Gainesville, this Medal of Honor Host City program. And also, I thought it would be a good opportunity to perhaps uh, raise some money for the program. And that's how the idea for this red carpet premiere happened. How many attended the premiere itself when you guys are inside about to watch the movie? How many in attendance that evening? There were roughly 400 people uh, wow. in attendance at the premiere. So as you go in and you've been with this from the very beginning and you're sitting there, what's going through your mind before the movie starts? Well, I mean, as a filmmaker uh, and an artist, I'm, I'm very uh, aware of of how my film is going to be um, received in the community, especially in a community that's uh, small and, and such, you know, it's a very tight-knit community. And 12 of the Living Medal of Honor recipients were present in the theater. So, you know... Had I, you I, met any of these guys before? I, I have had the honor of meeting all of, all of them and I've gotten to know them personally, so, you know, they have not seen the film, so it, it was a nerve-wracking experience. So they show the movie, okay, mm -hmm. and then the lights come up, mm -hmm. and you wait for the reaction. What kind of feedback did you get immediately afterwards? Well, I looked out over the, uh, the audience and I saw tears. Right. So I thought, well, that was a very unexpected thing. I did not expect to, to see the level of emotion that came out in so many people that were in the audience. And I believe that we had two standing ovations. Wow. Which, again, really surprised me. Yeah. You've seen a lot of the footage from the carpet. Right. That evening. So going through the footage and looking at it, did you have any moments that kind of uh, uh, were emotional for you as far as some of the interviews and things like that? Well, you're right. Typically, I'm either behind the camera or I'm producing. So that night, I was just a guest, just like anyone else. Right. Which was kind of fun for me to be able to, you know, go to the event and go walk the red carpet just like everyone else. But uh, I think every one of the recipients that showed up brings a unique perspective, uh, you know, to the table. And of course, uh, Mr. Finn, John Finn, the oldest living Medal of Honor recipient was in attendance. And when he, um, when he rolled down the red carpet, it, it was, it was amazing, you know, I was, I was honored and I was proud that he was able to attend and uh, see the film and, and just be a part of something 
that you know is 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 bigger than all of us. Again, guys, we'd like to ask you a few questions if that's okay. Go right ahead, see if I got an answer. <laughs> I have a feeling that you probably do. Now, you're approaching the century mark, so making you, of course, the oldest living recipient of the Medal of Honor. That's correct, so I understand it, yes. Now, they say that with time comes a lot of perception. So what kind of perception comes with, uh, comes with this? About being here in Gainesville? About being Number here one, in... top deal. <laughs> How many years have you been coming to Gainesville, sir? I didn't hear you. How many years have you been coming to Gainesville and participating? Oh, this is, well, this is my second trip to Gainesville that I remember. I could have been drunk a couple of times. <laughs> What is the one question that someone like yourself continues to be asked in regard to your Medal of Honor? Well, the question you get asked the most was, what did you do to win the Medal of Honor? Well, you don't win it. You're awarded it <laughs> in any way. And the answer to that is you didn't have enough sense to come in out of the rain. <laughs> Now, you look around the current state of our country and so forth, do you see the level of patriotism that you wish was out there? Do, does that kind of thing, do you think it's, the, do you, has it diminished or has it increased throughout your years? Well, I don't know whether I'm answering your question or not, but I have great faith in our American people. And I don't give a damn where they are. Sooner or later, some guy is going to do a heroic deed. If he's there, it's done. <laughs> By American youth. Yeah. Now, as we're here on the red carpet, is there, is there a final thing that you would like to say, leave everyone, leave everyone with tonight? Uh, I'm deaf. Say it again. Is there... <laughs> What, what, what lasting thing could you say to all these people standing around here for you and, uh, and, and, and participating in this? What is it that you'd like to say to them? I would say this, and I have no hesitation in saying it. You're all Americans. I don't give a damn what your color is, black, green, white, and yellow. We're Americans, and just remember that and be an American in, in the, the time. <laughs> if the time comes, you'll be an American. Thank you so much, sir. Now, who were some of the people that were on the carpet? And we, you can actually go to the video uh, that you'd like to make mention of that also helped you put this all together. Well, you know, there's, there's a, a long list of people that help, you know, make a movie. You know, making a movie is uh, no small undertaking. Now, some of the people that uh, I, I was able to interview on the carpet that evening uh, was the uh, movie's director, yeah. Javier yeah. Sanchez, yeah. the Emmy-nominated, Emmy award-winning Emmy award Javier Sanchez. And you've won two Emmys. Now, how did Michael get you involved in this, pro in this project? 
Well, um, when he first called, he told me he had this great uh, footage of, of uh, the whole uh, situation that's going on here in Gainesville. The parade, how they honor the Medal of Honor recipients. And uh, I love the idea. I love the idea of helping out. And uh, I thought it was interesting that uh, this town, being in Texas and being such a small town, uh, honors them in such a great, great honor. I mean, flying them over here and um, doing the parade, doing the banquet, the book signing, uh, going to the schools. And, and I thought that was a great, great um, deal. And that's how I, that's what grabbed my attention to, uh, to perform and to uh, come and participate in, in such a great project. Also, the movie's composer, uh, Rich Douglas was someone that you were very happy to have on board. I actually shot Mike an email and we just started communicating that way and um, he was originally All right, so did you hear about the project? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. then you shot him an email. That's right. Asking to come on board? That's right, that's right. And he was originally going to do the music, then he heard some of my music and uh, we decided to kind of epic it up a little bit, bring in a full orchestra and, and kind of make it sound more like Band of Brothers type stuff, which is very cool, which is what I think these guys deserve musically, so something very dramatic and epic. What was your greatest uh, greatest source of inspiration as you were composing the music? Just the vets themselves. I mean, seriously, that's what, what more inspiration do you need? The Medal of Honor recipients themselves. It's just amazing. It's a, a great project to be a part of, and I, I look forward to collaborating with Light and Bear again in the future. For sure. and, and what exactly is your feeling as you stand here tonight getting ready to see your movie and the music up there on the big screen? Nervousness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see how it sounds inside, but uh, hopefully... Hopefully everybody thinks that it uh, adds to the film. We'll see. Right, we'll thanks see. so much. Thank you. Let's hear it for Rich Douglas, composer of the movie. Thank you. Now, David Margulies was the MC for the event that evening. The movie's sound engineer was the Grammy Award winning Eric Delagarde. Mm -hmm. Then you guys had Bach Norwood, the music producer mm -hmm. of the documentary. So Mike McCorse is the president of the Medal of Honor Host City Program. Okay, right. Glenn Locke is the mayor of Gainesville, so you got to work with him some. What is, what is this program, first of all, what does the program itself mean to you? It means a lot to the city of Gainesville. Quite frankly, it means a lot to everybody in the country. We're the only city, as you well know, that uh, have the Medal of Honor Host City program going. And it was started about eight years ago, and it's been uh, very, very uh, growing every single year. And then, uh, uh, one of the producers that was on the carpet that evening, you see her on the, uh, the, the video here. There were a number of Medal of Honor recipients that were in attendance at the premiere that evening. I wanted to make sure that they, uh, they were treated like uh, rock stars, so we provided limos for everyone, uh, red carpet, lights, um, you know, searchlights, the whole nine yards. I really wanted them to really kind of get a taste of what Hollywood was like. What exactly is going through your mind right now as you stand here tonight? Well, first of all, uh, I'm grateful that I have an opportunity to uh, uh, come to Gainesville and support their program. It's a very good, nice program, very good program. We all enjoy um, being able to come here and, and sh share with the, uh, the youth of the country what, what our re reflections are about the war and hear a little bit about history that they won't read in the history books. Uh, do you think people get it? Do you think people who aren't part of this town and the festivities and the rest of the country, do you think they really get uh, the respect and, and uh, do you think they really get what it is that you guys are trying to say? No, they don't. There's no way possible they would have a clue unless they, uh, you know, walk in our shoes or, or at least supported us. And once they've uh, been associated with us and learned exactly what messages we do have, then I think they'll, they will learn. But until they have an interest in wanting to learn, you know, it's like the old attitude, you can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. Well, the, no one has an interest out there unless they're influenced to learn. Thank you so much for being here tonight. All right, thank you. Don Ballard. Yeah, you received your Medal of Honor 32 years after the actual event of President Clinton in 1998, is that correct? Correct. That's correct. And, and what was that feeling whenever, whenever you did receive that Medal of Honor? Well, it was a wonderful feeling. Uh, the fact that my men thought as much of me as they did to put me up for this medal first, which I was unaware of. And then when they found out that it had not been issued to make it happen, 
but it was nothing that you were expecting after all those years of having uh, put in uh, your time and so forth. It was nothing that you expected to receive. Oh, absolutely not. I knew nothing of it and, uh, until I was told uh, in 1995, and the men that I served with made this happen. And, and as you as you speak to people who are watching this and so forth, what is it that you'd like to say? What message is it that you want to put out there? Basically, that I wear wear this for the men that did not come back, and also the men that came back because we've gotten them back together by all the. Uh, interest that was put into the medal when I did receive it. Now you assumed command when your chief commander was killed, and you were actually you were actually close to retirement when you got pulled into uh, pulled into action. I was I was an old man, yeah, thirty. <laughs> and tell us a little bit about whenever you did receive your medal of honor. Okay, what what was it that was going through your mind? Well. Uh, President Johnson gave it to me. I was thinking uh, how much it cost to get here. <laughs> how does something, what, once you do go through battle and you endure everything that you endure, how does something like that change you for the rest of your life and the way that you look at your country, not only your country, but just your fellow human beings and the way that you interact? How does something like that change you? It, it doesn't really change you. It makes you more aware of what's going on around you. Uh, my young men that uh, we lost that day, uh, I still think about them. So it, uh, it's something that never leaves. So we were just doing our job. I had 200 men with me, and we were going to accomplish some mission, and we're all going to go home. Let me say something. Yeah. Yeah, I want to thank all these fine uh, airmen and Marines that are out here, and thank you for coming out, folks. I, I, I don't want to do a Marine Corps commercial, but once you, uh, once you join the Marine Corps, the change is forever. <laughs> Have you ever seen that commercial? And maybe you haven't. But it, do, you, do you find that there's a great sense of patriotism in the country right now? No. I, I, I have to categorize that, though. Here in Gainesville, Texas, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Now, you retire, you're a retired colonel. That you now live in North Carolina, so you travel a, you, you travel a long way to be here. Yes, sir, I have. Yes, two and a half hours by air, not too bad. Though. Now, how many years have you been coming here and participating uh, in it? This is my second year. I was here last year in uh, in 08. Now, what is it that uh, you see in the eyes of people as the festivities and everything are going on? What is it that you what 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 message do you get from people the most as far as feedback? Uh, the, the patriotism and the, uh, the the love of country that uh, is expressed by uh, all the uh, citizens of this uh, great town. It's a very, uh, it's very moving and very inspirational to me and to every, all of our recipients to be here and to be a part of this. So, as you step inside, you get ready to watch the documentary. What is it that you're hoping uh, that the rest of the country can pick up on from the festivities here in Gainesville? Just how much it costs to keep our freedom alive. Yeah. Do you think the rest of the country gets that? If we don't, we're going to get lost. I think we do. Do you find that this is a huge sense of patriotism in the country now? This is one of the most patriotic cities that I've ever been around. And in West Virginia, we have some pretty patriotic cities. But I believe this one far exceeds it. And how many years have you been coming here and participating in the festivities and the ceremonies? This is my second year. They're inviting me back, so I'll be here again next year. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh. And did you, uh, so were you able to talk to any of these guys afterwards? You guys had an after, uh, after uh, party event and so forth. So uh, what were some of the conversations that were going around, that kind of thing? I did. I, I had a, an opportunity to speak with several and uh, was very uh, encouraged by the feedback that they, uh, they had provided, you know, hearing that it just really gave them an opportunity to step back and look at what it is they're doing for the communities in a way that they might, uh, that they just have not been able to see before. Stand beside her 